Hello everybody, just having a look at the statistics and probability questions. Let's see how we go. First one is saying that there's 360 students and it says pick their favourite sport, what's the most popular? I can definitely see that it's basketball, but how much are all these little bits? There's four of them there, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. There's 12 of those and there's 360 students. So 360 divided by 12 will be 30. 30 times the four sections will give us 120. Next one, exactly the same thing, except this time we've got 540 and it's asking us the least popular. So 540 divided by 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. And you just put that in your calculator and that will end up getting you your answer. 12 fours are 48 with six remainder. That should be a 60. 12 fives make 60. So 45 is our answer for that one. For the next one, uh, a boy at 74 centimeters, 12 months, closest to which percentile? So 74 and 12 months. So here's 12 months. There's 74. We just need those lines to match. And it matches at that purple line. You follow that purple line all the way up and it's at the 25th percentile. So that literally means that um, a baby that is 74 centimeters in length at 12 months of age is bigger than 25% of babies at that age. So 25th percentile. Next one. Jack, 18 months old, P to 10. Sounds important. How much more calcium does P to need each day than Jack? So if you're 18 months old, you are a year and a half. So if we follow this all the way up, it gets us over to there. That is at 750. Whilst if we have a look at the 10 year old, Peter, we follow that all the way up and we follow that all the way across if we can and it goes up to about 850 the difference between them hopefully you can tell it's pretty easy to be 100 and same thing for the next ones we're looking at males females in different age groups uh, how much are 40 year old females getting how much less are they getting than the recommended or the dietary reference intake that's 40 year old that's the important thing so we've got to match up 40 with female. There it is, go all the way across 600. Sorry about my terrible line. It's a little bit better. So 600 and comparing it to 40 year old up here, dietary reference intake, the gray line, moving it all the way across is 1,000. And we should be able to see that the difference between them is 400. Next one. Same sort of question again, but this time we're talking 60 year old males. So 60 year old males, red line for males, uh, recommended dietary intake. So we're just comparing that to the mat, to the gray line again. We follow that all the way across. Again, terrible line. Um, that's 700. Whilst if we follow this all the way up there, go across. Sorry, my laptop's a bit unstable. 1200. So it should be a difference of 500 if you did the subtraction. Okay, next one, it says that there's 29 students and here are their results for year seven and year nine. So there's my 29 students, all those dots. I have to go through the true or false. The difference between highest and lowest in year seven is 120. 520 is the lowest. See how there's a green dot just above it? 600 is the highest. If you do 600 take 520, you're only going to get a difference of 80, not 120, so that's false. 69 scores were greater than 585. Here's where 585 would be, and you can count the dots uh, to the right of that, there's six of them. There's one there, there's two above there, there's another two above there, so one, two, three, four, five, and six. So that is true. Next one, there is at least one student whose reading score has increased by 20 or more from year seven to year nine. 
So this is a bit of a funny question. You don't know exactly which student is which from the dots and this, you know, the student that got 520 could have gone all the way up to 260, could have, um, or, you know, there could be students that have got worse. So we don't know, but the only thing we do know that could help us is while looking at the range. In year seven, they've gone from 520 to 600. In year nine, they've gone from 540 to 620. So as we can see, there's an increase of 20 in the minimum, there's an increase of 20 in the maximum, which means at least somebody has improved by 20. So yes, there has been somebody who has, because even the very worst student uh, must have improved uh, by at least 20, and the very best student, um, somebody has improved by at least 20. It could have been the best one that's improved by 20, it could have been someone else that's improved by more. And it does say 20 or more. The difference between the median reading scores of seven and nine, year seven and nine is 10. You can tell that by looking at that line there. Because what it is, this is the uh, first 25 uh, percentile. So the bottom quarter of results. That's the next quarter. That's the next quarter. That's the top quarter. So that line is obviously the halfway mark, the median mark that anybody got, the middle result. So the middle result uh, clearly is 555 for year seven, and the median result for year nine is 570. So we definitely know that it's an improvement of 15, which is not, um, not 10. So that's false. Okay, moving onwards, teacher gives an assessment to 25 students in her class and here's a plot of the student's score. So let's have a look, more than half the class scored below 75%, so that's where 75% would be. Half of the class of 25 is 12 and a half, so more than half would be 13. Are there 13 dots less than 75? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. There's only 10, so that one is a false. 20% of the class scored greater than 70, but less than 75. So if I go greater than 70 and less than 75, and I need 20%, 20% is a fifth, a fifth of 25 is five. And if you didn't know that already, you could have, you allowed to use a calculator, so you could do 0.2, which is 20% times by 25, that'll get you your five, okay? Um, so yes, 20% uh, of the class, there's five results in that little category, so yes, that is true. One fifth of the class scored less than 70, so if I look at where my 70 line is, are there five values less than that? One, two, three, four. Um, there's only four there, so that one has to be false. Again, one fifth and 20% are the same thing, okay? You can figure out a fifth by dividing something by five. So 25 divided by five, okay? They're the same things. Uh, the mode of the class is 76%. There's our 76, we can just tell just by looking at it, that's the highest number that there is there. You can count the dots, uh, there's five of them there, that's more than for any other value. By the way, if you've got any questions, leave them in the comments below, I'm happy to explain things further. I'm just trying to get through these. So, what's the second most popular colour of shoes amongst women? It means it's got to be green, the second highest green tower. Looks to be that one there to me. I call it red. Next one, which category of work satisfaction is the proportion of males the greatest? So it's, where are there more, most males, greatest proportion of males? It'll be the highest uh, blue column. The highest blue column seems to be that one there. And that is moderately satisfied. Graph below shows boys and girls enrolled in subjects. Which subject has the proportion of males the highest? Boys are males. So which is the highest male column? Maths. Hopefully you can tell that that column is taller than the other ones. Only just taller than the science one. 
only just. Okay, Ralph Below shows books read by students in January. For which student is a proportion of fiction books the greatest? So, proportion. Um, ah. Well, the actual proportion, proportion actually means percentage. So by percentage, it would actually be this student here, where it's got the percentage. Uh, Javier has the most books, seven of those, but it's only seven out of 10, which is 70%. While this one looks to be five out of six, which is 83%. Um, and that's a lot more than everyone else. So, yes, that's definitely the one. Okay, next. It says, how have they been ordered? Um, just by looking at it, I can tell that it seems to be the darker one. It seems to be going from top to bottom, but the darker one is getting smaller. So that means it's in descending order, age two to five. And then they ask a similar thing for the next question. Has it been sorted in ascending or descending order? Uh, obviously the cost is going down, so we call that descending order. Next one again is asking how they have grouped it. And again, hopefully you can see that it seems to be by the millions color. Um, the, as a percentage of country population, it's going up and down a little bit. If you follow the lines, it's going up and down it's not smooth so it's definitely got to do with it in millions and it's again it's descending all right question eight true or false career has a lower rate of employment than ocd average for both men and women so we've got to compare to the average there uh, so the average for women is around just under 80 well, for the Korean women, it's way less. It's at the 60. So right there, for both men and women, um, uh, well, it says actually Korea has lower, so it does have lower for women. So it's done that part. What about for men? For men, the career is at about 89. Also over here, the OECD is a little bit lower than that. It's a little bit further away from the line. So it, it is not lower for both. It's certainly lower for women, but it's actually higher for men. So that is false. Now for this next one, what score did the student who achieved 56% of their maths get in their science? So here's our math scores. So there's our 56. And that seems to be right on the line there. 70 is the answer. Okay, Venn diagram it says there's 100 students. How many are taking biology? So this is the only value that we're missing. So we just need to add up everything else. So 27 plus 20, 27 plus 3 is 30, 35, uh, 41, that's 73, that's 15, 88. So I'm guessing 12 is my answer. Again, just use a calculator to confirm. Um, I'll just do it quickly again. 23, 30, 35, uh, 41, 73 plus 15 is 88 and leaves 12. Yep. Okay. And for the next one, same again, although this time we've got two gaps. Now it's asking, what are the number of participants who owned both a dog and a fish, but not a cat? So they're asking who owns dog and fish, but not cat. So we're looking for that one there. Now, because this is 84 have a cat, we need to add up all the cat values. That one, that one, that one, and that one to equal 84. 29 and 31 make 60, plus 7 makes 67. But we need it to be 84. 84 take 67 will equal 17. So that's the amount of people that goes in this one. Then we need to... Um, add up all the numbers that we've got and get it to equal 158. What is missing will be that question mark there, which will give us the answers of dog, fish, but not cat. So adding up all the numbers, 29 plus 31 plus 17 plus seven plus another 17 plus 42 plus 12. 
one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Uh, yep, I've got all my numbers. So that one, you just put in your calculator, but that one's 60, that one's 24, uh, that one is 59, plus that will make it 71, plus those two is 84, plus 71 will make it 155, and therefore there is three remaining to get to your 158. Again, you just put it in your calculator. Um, don't have, don't add it up like I do. Do it how you do. All right, next one. 67 students were surveyed regarding which of the three sports they play, and the results are displayed in the following Venn diagram. Given 30 students play AFL, how many play both tennis and basketball but not AFL? So straight away, I need 30 in the AFL circle. So, so there needs to be 67 in total. And because it says 30 play AFL, well, this is a little bit tricky. It needs to be 67 in total. Let's add up how much we've got so far. We've got 21 plus 15 is 36. So 36 for the top row. And then we've got eight and six, we've got another 14. So we've got 50, which means we've got 17 students left to put in the other two sections. So that's 21, 36, 14. So, it says given 30 students play AFL, so we won't actually know what numbers go in individually in these ones. All we will know will be that it is a grand total of 30 in there because we've already got 21. We, will we can just make up our numbers. Um, so let's say, by makeup, I mean, you still need to make the maths correct. We've got 21, we needed 30. So obviously you're gonna to have to have nine. That's why I've put four and five in there. Now, because I've just added the nine to that section, that means I've got 59 in total across there. But now we're looking for this one in here, which is tennis and basketball, but not AFL. Um, so obviously the AFL ones will fill up the other sections. This was a bit more of a trickier question. But yeah, we need to get 67. We've got 59 now of all our numbers. So 67 take 59 will get us our eight that we are missing. So eight is the answer. And next one. Okay, so Japanese is 15. Uh, 18 is Italian. And 10 studied neither. Um, and it says that there's 30 language students, 15 and 18. Oh, whoops. 15, I should get rid of that. I'll get rid of what I've written. Um, how many students studied both Italian and Japanese? So because there's 10 that didn't do either, that's 10 right there, which means there needs to be 20 um, students left that studied something and 15 did Japanese and 18 did Italian so I think that says to me that quite a lot of students did both of them um, these are very funny numbers so like for example, it could be, again, I'm just assuming here. I was gonna say if it was 10 in the middle and then five and then eight, but that's way too big because that ends up getting um, five and eight is 13 plus 10 is 23. No, it's not way too big. It's only slightly bit too big. What if I had um, 11 in the middle? If I had 11 in the middle and then a further four that taught Japanese and uh, a further seven that taught, uh, uh, that were learning uh, Italian, that's 11 plus 11, 22. Uh, so we're getting closer. So this was three away and this was two away. So we obviously got to go two higher to make it 13. 
So if we have 13 in the middle, that means we have another 2 there, and we have another 5 here. 7 plus 13 is 20. So how many students studied both Italian and Japanese? Um, the answer is uh, 13. How many students studied only Italian? It's 5. So maybe not the best way to figure this out, but just use a little bit of trial and error. Put in a number. You know that because there's 30 students and there's 10 that didn't study anything, you're working with 20 for these middle values. They have to add up to 20. But obviously, the middle and this have to add up to uh, 18, whilst the middle and this, this one down there, has to add up to 15. So yeah, just a little bit of trial and error. You pick a number, you see how far off it is. You pick a number, see how far off it is. You can end up seeing the pattern. Again, just to reiterate from 10, I was I was three away from my answer. But then when I changed it by one, I was still two away from my answer. So I needed to change this by another two to end up getting the answer that I wanted. So we're probably gonna have to do it again. In a group of 30, 21 did French, 16 did Spanish, six did Neva. Complete it. Uh, so French is 21, Spanish is 16, and it needs to add up to 24 because 30, take away the six that didn't study anything, is 24. So I need my numbers to add up to 24. So I'm just going to pick a crazy number. Let's say 10. That means that there's a further 11 that speak uh, that were doing studying French. And then there's the Spanish will be the further six. And does this add up to 24? 11 plus 10, 21 plus 6, 27. 27. That means I'm missing by three. So this number, I believe, is three too small. So if I make it 13, that means there must be eight here. And that means there must be three here. Eight plus three, 11 plus 13 is 24. 24 plus our 6 makes 30. Perfect. So we put the 13 in the middle. We put the 8 there. We put the 3 there. How many students studied both French and Spanish? It's 13. How many students studied only French? 8. Hopefully that makes good sense. Okay, moving on. More Venn diagrams. 70 were asked whether they had cat, dog, or neva, or both. 70. Okay, the results are displayed in the Venn diagram below. So 23, 19, and 15, and then we've got 13. 23 and 19 is 42. 15 and 13 is 28. Yep, so there's that 70. No worries. If this information were to be displayed as a two-way table instead, which number should be entered into the red cell? Well, I'm going to fill them all in anyways. So the people, so has has a dog and has a cat is there. That's 19. Uh, has a dog, uh, has a cat, but does not have a dog. So cat only, that is 15. Does not have a cat. Actually, I'll do this the last one. Does not have a cat and does not have a dog is 13. And does not have a cat but has a dog is 23. What's our answer? More Venn diagrams. Following 100 students where group A is, is students who study art and design. So A for arts. B is biology. C is chemistry. I don't know why I must messed, up, messed up my T, but I will calculate the value of X. So it needs to add up to 100 in total. So 25 plus 35 is 60, plus 8 and 2 is 10, which I add my 10 and that'll make it 70. And yeah, the only thing I'm missing is X, so that must be 30. Hopefully that makes sense. Describing words a group with 25 members. Um, I'm not going to write it because of sketchy writing with my stylus. But yes, group C 
is um, chemistry. So that's going to be chemistry only. Um, so yeah, hopefully you're good with that, Ken. All right, what fraction of those students who studied biology also studied chemistry? So because we've actually got 30 in here and it's saying how much of the biology people did chemistry as well, it's 35 out of, and you have to add up those two values to get 65. And we can see because they end in five, then it must be divisible by five. You can use your calculator to do that. Um, I know off by heart though that uh, 65 is 13 fives. So that's the answer for that one. So I'll write that 13, uh, sorry, seven over 13. All right. How many students who studied biology also studied art and design? As we can see, art and design is its own circle. So there's no overlap there. So it's none that did both of those. What percentage of students surveyed studied both biology and chemistry? Well, because we've got 100, it's very easy to get percent because percent literally means out of 100. So how many did biology and chemistry? Well, it's 35. So 35%. What is the probability that one student selected at random from the survey will not have studied chemistry? So the ones that have studied chemistry is 25 and 35, which is 60, and therefore 100 take away your 60 will get your leftover ones, which is 40% or 0.4 because they do want a decimal. Okay. So I'll just write that one in. Sorry, I was just letting my dog inside. All right, what is the ratio of students taking biology only to students taking biology? So there are 30 students doing biology only. See, biology only, compared to another 35 that are doing something else. So we have to do the ratio of 30 to 35 which we can change, again, you divide both numbers, sorry about my dodgy three, divide both the numbers by five, because numbers that end in zero and, and or five are divisible by five, so that will end up being six to seven. Easy enough. Next one, calculate the mean of the following exam grades. You would just use your calculator to add these up and then divide by seven, um, I guess I'll try without calculator quickly. Hopefully I'll get it right. Uh, so that's 136 and 50. So 136 plus 136 is 272 plus 168 plus 50. So adding those two will be 218. 218 plus 272 is 490. 490 divided by seven will get you 70 because seven sevens are 49. Yep, that sounds like an answer that they want. That's a key thing as well for land type. If I ended up getting an answer like 500, which is not divisible by seven, and it gives me a decimal answer, I've clearly done something wrong because it actually gave me a nice round, lovely number um, that is quite easy to divide by seven um, with calculator or with short division. Um, yeah, it sort of shows me that I'm probably on the right track, probably. There's a much higher chance of it being on the right track. 16, so the results of a survey, 200 people, that's important, are displayed. How many males take public transport to work? Males, um, 61, I guess. What percentage of total survey participants walk to work? So there's 200 people that were asked and the people that walk, we've got a total of five. Five out of 200 is two and a half percent. You just do five divided by 200 to get your decimal and then multiply by 100. What percentage of female drivers, females drive a car to work? There's our, well, our female total is 80 and the ones that drive is 43. So it would be 43 out of 80 to get us our decimal times 100. 
that's a bit of a strange percentage that they're looking for. So that won't be a round number. I'll just move my calculator over here. And 0.4, oops, 43 divided by 80. Yeah, but that rounds up to 54%. Strange, it's strange that one. 53.75, I guess, if they want it, um, if they want the accurate, uh, fully accurate number, which I, I would put um, if I was doing the test. So I should put it here as well, 53.75%. And what percentage of those who ride a bike to work are male? So again, there's 17 people that ride a bike and 12 of them are male. So it's gonna be a little bit less than two thirds. So you do 12 divided by 17, and times 100 and you get 70%. So that'll be 70.59 that we'll round up to, because as we can see, 70.588, that second eight goes up to a nine. So 78.59. Okay. Two year five students, girl and a boy, selected at random. The two year five classes, 5A, 5B, the girls' names, boys are placed, number of girls, a girl is selected. What is the chance selected girl is from 5A? Um, what is the chance that it's a girl from 5A? Well, there's 25 girls, according to those values there, there's 25, and 5A has 10 of them, so 10 out of 25. Um, that is uh, two-fifths, which you put that in a calculator, you get 0.4, which is 40%. All right, 17B, a lot of writing for not much of a question. 17B, two classes, 5A, 5B, one student collected from, to be randomly selected. 17 girls, nine boys. A student from 5A is selected. What's the chance it's a girl? So each class is separate containers again. The 5A has 17 and 9, so it's 26. So it's out of 26, and it says there's 17 girls. So it's going to be 17 out of 26, which will be a little bit more than two-thirds, maybe about 70% thereabouts. Yeah, yeah, that's about right. My guess was a little off, but yeah, so 0 0.653, but it wants it as a percentage, so you just have to multiply that by 100 times by 100. 65.34, that third one is a four. Obviously, four won't round up, so 65.38%. Bit of a funny answer. Okay, a raffle can, has tickets one to 20. What is the probability that the number of the ticket drawn is multiple of three or five? Um, so the multiples are three or five. So three, six, nine, 12, 15, 18. And then the multiples of five that we haven't already written down will be that and that. What's the probability that we get one of those? So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, nine out of a 20. Again, you can put in your calculator, nine divided by 20 times 100, and that will get you 45%. Okay. Um, okay, so they want it as a fraction so leave it as a 9 over 20 no simplification possible makes me think that I've actually missed a number but I haven't hmm bit strange okay there are eight balls uh, eight seven eight red seven blue six green if one is pulled out at random what's the probability it's neither red or green so you've got 21 balls and if it's not red or green, so that's eight and six, 14, it means it can only be blue 
which means it is a 7 out of 21 chance and we will simplify that by dividing each of them by 7 to get 1 out of 3. So that's what they're looking for. That one I need a simplification. Okay, I think I'm near the end now. Um, possible outcomes when two dice are thrown. Use this to determine the following probabilities as fractions in simplest forms. The two dice show the same numbers. Well, because it's obviously six by six, there's 36 different options, right? How many times do they show the same numbers? Well, there's gonna be obviously six different possibilities of that, like, you know, double ones, double twos, and so forth. So clearly six out of 36, which I call one out of six when I simplify. Um, the two dice add up to nine, um, again, not even having to look at the table, you know, you can just figure out what it would be, you know, like you're going to have to have things like three and six. That's a weird three, three and six, and then also six and three, and then same for four and five and five and four. Um, it's not really, I think that's all the options. So it's only actually, uh, four options out of 36, which that will simplify to one out of nine. Both dice show even numbers. Uh, let's go a different color to try to show this one. How about red? So both even. So obviously you can't have anything in the ones or anything in the threes, anything's in the fives, anything's in the ones, threes or fives. So we've only got that one there, one there, that one there, that one there. That one there, that one there, that one there, that one there, that one there. So that is nine. Um, so nine out of 36 is a quarter. And last one, the two dice multiply to make 12. Okay, maybe I'll use a highlighter for this one. So multiply to make 12, so three and four make 12. So those two, and then obviously six and two, and that, and uh, that will be all, because you can't obviously have 12 and one. Um, so yeah, again, that will be uh, four out of 36, which will be one out of nine. Very interesting. Sort of thought that there would be um, some different answers to that. I'm just going to redo B just to make sure. I'll use a different color highlighter. So two dice add up to nine. So six and three and three and six, five and four and four and five. Yeah, there's not going to be any more. Yeah, I think I've got them right. What is the probability that two dice are thrown the topmost face some faces sum up to nine. Top most faces. Um isn't this exactly what twenty A B was? So they add up to nine. So it is you know, there's only four options out of the thirty six which we call one out of nine. What's the probability that they add up to seven? All right, now I'll use a different one, purple. So add up to seven, there's gonna be a lot more of these, I believe. Six and one, yeah, five and two. Well, there won't be that much more. Four and three, three and four, two and five, one and six. So there's six of them. Uh, so 6 out of 36, which of course equals 1 out of 6, when I simplify both numbers. When you know your times tables, the simplification is automatic. You don't even have to think about it. One bag contains three balls numbered 1 to 3, while a second bag contains five balls 1 to 5. One ball is drawn at random from each bag. Create a table showing all possible outcomes. I don't have to create a table. Okay. So, three bags 
three balls numbered one to three. And second bag, five balls. So if we're just going to do the same thing as what they had up here. So if you just had, you know, one, two, and three, and then your other balls are one, two, three, and four. So like that, I guess. And then you just write, you know, your one, one, and one, two, one, three, one, four. And that's two, one, two, 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 three, two, four, and three. Practice writing my threes. Like that, I guess. Um, use a table to determine probability as a decimal number that both balls show the same number. Um, so one, two, three. It's the only you know possible options it would be. So done my table. Um, there's three options out of twelve. So three out of twelve. You just do three divided by twelve in your um, calculator, and you get 0.25. Uh, use a table to determine the probability as a fraction in simplest form. That the difference between the two numbers is two. Um, well, it can be when you get. Let's go a different number, a uh, different color. Let's go eight. Let's go green. Okay, so that one has a difference of two. That one has a difference of two. And. I've written the wrong things for one of them. That should have been one, three. So that one will have a difference of two as well. Just a bit of common sense, three, one, one, three. There's got to be one of each one. So that's uh, three out of 12. Out of 12, which of course is one over four. Use the table to determine the probability as a decimal number around a two that one number is odd and the other one is even. Yeah, let's go yellow. So that has odd even, odd even, even odd, even odd. That is odd even, odd even. So one, two, three, four, five, six, six out of 12. Um, so that's 50%. Um, I believe I've got that right. So 50% is gonna be 0.5 as a decimal. All right, next one, six balls numbered one to six. Second ball contains Numbers one to four, one's drawn at random, what's the probability that each, the sum of the balls is six. So if I have the one from the first bag, I can't do it. So, but if I have a two, I could have a two and a four. If I got a three, I could have a three and a three. If I had a four, I could have a four and a two. If I had a five, I could have a five and a one and I couldn't if I have a six. So one, two, three, four. Four options out of six times four is twenty-four. So four options out of twenty-four. That's one out of six. Okay, both balls have the same number. Um, because this one's only got four numbers in there, there's only actual four ways that it could be. So again it's going to be four out of twenty-four equals one out of six. And this one, both balls have an even number. Um, well, there's three even numbers there, two, four, six, and there's two here. So three times two equals six. That's how many different combinations there are. Six out of 24 equals one over four. And 22, 
Uh, five cards are picked in turn from a shuffled pack of 52 playing cards. First four cards are the Jack, King, Queen, Jack. What's the probability that the fifth card will not be another picture card? So, because we've already grabbed one picture card, another picture card, another picture card, another picture card. We've taken four of the picture cards out of the 52. So now there's 48 cards left. And because normally, so it goes up from one to 10 and then Jack, Queen, King. So there's 48 cards left and there is normally uh, 40 non-picture cards, 12 picture cards. So it'll be 40 out of 48 um, will be the odds. There's only eight of the picture cards left. So the probability as a fraction, you just got to simplify those. You should hopefully see from your four times tables, they're both divisible by four, which will get that both even numbers. So you divide by two. There's a five in six chance that it will not be a picture card that you grab. One in six chance of it being a picture. Yay, and lots of space for this. Okay, first three cards. Uh, King, da da da, what's... What's the probability the fourth card will be another picture card? So you've lost three cards out of your 52. So you've got 49 left. And the number of picture cards, normally there is 12, but now there's only going to be nine. So this is going to be, I think, just less than 20%. Nine divided by 49 times, oops, nine divided by 49 times 100, 18.37%. Hopefully you can see that I had to round because the second number, uh, six rounds up because the next number after that is seven. So that propels 367 to turn into 0.37. So that's the answer for 22. And 23, there's 18 boys, six girls in a group. So that's 24 in total. If one child is chosen at random to leave the group, what is the chance that the child is a boy? Well, it will be 18 out of 24, which hopefully you know will be three quarters without even looking at it. But if you did need to look at it, you just go your calculator. 18 divided by 24 equals 75% times 100. Yeah, 75%. Um, did it want a percentage? It did, didn't it? Yep, there we go. Uh, that's all, and then it has the answers. Well, hopefully this was helpful. Um, yeah, if you've got any questions, as always, just leave them in the comments below. Thank you so much for your time.